Shalom, Pastor. Hello, Shalom. How are you? I'm good, and you? I'm good, thank you. We thank you, Yahweh. Hello. King Mani, Hi. how are you? I'm good, Pastor. Ah, that's great. And how is school? Good. Ah, that's great. We are the when are you coming to Dubai? No, it's already time. It's time up. Oh yes, Just people yes. Are getting to the team. Pastor is asking when are you coming and, to Joburg? Um, Pastor will come soon to Joburg. <laughs> oh, okay. I wonder when is that? <laughs> uh, soon, uh, as soon as it's, great, it's greater than one. <laughs> shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Pastor, Sister of Kofi. Shalom, shalom. I am Yazus. We are just one minute away from seven o'clock. I am roughly two minutes flat away from the house. So, but yeah, I think uh, by the time we start, I, I'll be ready to shoot. Okay, okay. Sister Nobukosi, can you can you do the praises and um, the opening in prayer? Let's let's have praises. Hallelujah, Yahweh, Hallelujah, our Elohim, Hallelujah, our Heavenly Father, Yahweh the Great I am, Yahweh the Creator of the universe, Yahweh the Most High Elohim, the only Elohim. Father, we glorify you. You are worthy of our praises. Father, you are the Alpha and the Omega. We thank you, Father. We glorify you, Yahweh, because, Father, you are Yahweh, our Elohim. You are Yahweh, Shalom. You are Yahweh, our protector, our provider, our shield. Father, we thank you. You are Yahweh, our healer. Father, we glorify you. We thank you, Father, in the mighty name of our Messiah, Yeshua. For, Father, you never fail us, Father. You are Yahweh, who is omnipresent. You are Yahweh, who is forever with us father for father we are called by your name and father we thank you for your promises father we glorify you we honor you our elohim we thank you father for everything father in the mighty name of our messiah sure we glorify you father hallelujah hallelujah praise be to our elohim hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. let us open in prayer our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, our Elohim, we come before you, Father, this evening. Father, we thank you, Father, for your work of mercy. As we come before you, Father, we pray that you may forgive us. For, Father, we are confessing with our mouths, Father, that we have indeed sinned. We have fallen short, Father, of your glory. We pray, Father, that you may forgive us. For, Father, we acknowledge, Father, the wrong that we have done. We pray, Father, that our, our apology, Father, our coming before you, Father, our confession, Father, that it is sincere, Father. For, Father, we wish, Father, we had, we are stronger, Father, that we are able to resist temptation. Father, we want to be able to reach a point, Father, where we are strong and we are, we are able to resist all temptation, all evil, Father. Father, we pray, Father, that from the mistakes that we have done, from the sins that we have committed, Father, that we may learn, Father, our mistakes, that we never repeat the same mistakes over and over again. Father, we pray for your wisdom. We pray, Father, for your strength. We pray for your word, Father, to come alive in us at all times, whenever, Father, we are faced with temptations and challenges, Father. We pray, Father, that you forgive us for the sins 
of all the thing of all the things father that have come out of our mouths father we pray father that you may always father give us the ability father to think father before we speak father that you give us father the ability father and the strength father to sift everything father that comes out of our mouths for we know father that our words father they are spirit help us our elohim and father as we are in front of you father we cancel every word father that might have caused father a curse father to ourselves and to others father in the mighty name of our messiah Yeshua, we cancel all evil father that father is associated with our lives that is associated with everything father that is close to us Father, we cancel it in the mighty name of our Messiah, Yeshua. We cancel evil, Father, in our households. Father, in everything, Father, that we own. Father, as we walk out, Father, we pray, Father, that we, every evil, Father, will flee from us in the wonderful name of our Messiah, Yeshua. Father, we also pray for those who have hurt us. Father, our enemies, Father, in the name of our Messiah, Yeshua. Father, we pray for them. For Father, you have said so in your word. Father, that you, Father, we must request, Father, that you bless them, Father, instead, that you bless them mightily, Father. For Father, we are asking that you forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Father, we pray, Father, that forgive them, our Elohim. Father, we pray, Father, that rather, Father, they are gained for your kingdom in the name of our Messiah, sure. As we seek your protection, Father, as we seek your deliverance, Father, we also pray our Elohim for those that we have hurt, Father, that you may forgive them, Father, that they may learn to forgive us, Father, Father, that there is no spirit of unforgiveness that will be found in us. Father, we thank you. And Father, as we are about, Father, to engage, Father, in your word, that, Father, we are having this study today. Father, we pray that you may be with us, that you may open our hearts, our souls to receive your word. Father, that not only, Father, we do we receive your word, Father, but, Father, that it lives in us. Father, that it informs every decision. Father, our behavior, Father, that it always be in line with your word. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. I pray for each and every brother and father on the platform today that, Father, only your spirit, only your Holy Spirit, our Elohim, will take charge. Father, we pray, Father, for Pastor, Father, we pray for Brother Karunda, and we pray, Father, for the moderator. Be with them, Father, that every word, Father, that comes out of their mouths, Father, that they are speaking, Father, your words, Father, that it is you, Father, speaking through them, Father, not their own understanding, Father, but, Father, that it be received, Father, in the manner that you want us to receive it. We thank you. We glorify you. So be it. Hallelujah. So be it. Hallelujah. So be it. So be it. Brethren, good evening. Once again, it's a new day, a new day where we start uh, a new chapter in our lives and a new chapter in our um, spiritual lives. Uh, Brother Karunda and Pastor, good evening. Shalom. Shalom. Good evening. Shalom. 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 Thank you very much, um, uh, Sister Nokosi. Uh, thank you very much, Sister so, uh, Nokosi. Shalom to everyone. Uh, who has joined us, uh, let us be fed in, uh, in today's book of uh, Second Daniel. Uh, Pastor, over to you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Um, we are starting on uh, verse, uh, our chapter, chapter three. Uh, we we saw in the chapter two uh, that um, Daniel was then given the the interpretation of of the the, the image, the dream that um, the king had. And um, we saw that uh, he was also then uh, made in charge of all that was there because as the king had promised. So 
this was a lesson to us to show us that whatever happens, if it is in line with Yahweh, Yahweh will sustain us. He will protect us and he'll give us wisdom. And today we are going to go on to the challenges now. After Daniel had been made such a great person, but still the enemy he had to come in other ways, uh, other ways to actually try and he destroyed Daniel. So today we are starting on chapter three. Um, Brother Kolani uh, will be reading for us, moderating for us, because um, uh, Sister Emily had again another uh, problem of load shedding. But um, we thank Yahweh because uh, this is part of Yahweh's plans. Um, Brother Tolani, yes, sir. We are starting off. Um, we are starting on the the title, Nebuchadnezzar's golden image, and um, we are reading from uh, Daniel three, three verse one. Verse one. Apologies, I said Daniel two. <laughs> I apologies. All right. Okay. Daniel 3, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits, its breadth six feet, uh, six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here we see Nebuchadnezzar. He then made a statue of gold. And um, what was the reason? He was told that you are king of all kings. And then he took to heart that he then wanted to have a statue. And uh, this statue was meant for people to worship it. Brother Karunda, good afternoon, good morning, good good evening, good day. Yes, shalom, shalom, Pastor. I'm good, and you? I am well. I am well. Yes, we thank Yahweh for this time that we we have met here in the platform to discuss the word of Yahweh. May Yahweh be with us all and give us liberations on whatever he wants us to. And now we can see the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, made an image of gold. And uh, what was the purpose of making this statue? Remember, according to the, to the revelation of the statue that he he dreamt about. He was told by prophet Daniel that he is the head of gold. Now he decided to make a statue of gold and its measurements are there given that the height was six cubit and the breadth and its breadth six cu cubits. And uh, actually he set it up in a plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. <coughs> Maybe we're gonna see what is the reasons or the purpose of this statue. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. But, um, Pastor, anything you wanna comment on or should I continue? Yeah, we can continue. Continue, all right. We're going to read from uh, verses 2 up to 4. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, 
the judges and the justices, and all the officials of the provinces were ordered to come to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Then were gathered the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, and justices, and all the officials of the provinces to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the herald shouted with strength, to you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages. Hallelujah. 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 We see now um, this thing of saying he's the head of gold entered in his, in his head and um, he wanted to show who he is for real. And then he then brought this thing for people to worship. And uh, in his worshiping, first of all, he called all the governors and as he had made or given a directive, this at times we find ourselves as people, we are blessed by Yahweh, but to then go further because we now want to, we think that uh, that blessings is now forever, not knowing that Yahweh can take it away. Brother Karunda. Yes, we can now see what uh, the king decided to do is that he called all the, all his government officials, starting from the prefects, governors, counselors, treasurers, judges, justice, and all officials of the provinces to dedicate the image that he had made. And uh, we can see now, you see, we, we, we have to understand that Babylon was one of the, the city where idol worship was highly done. And now since King Nebuchadnezzar was told that he is that head of gold, he decided now to make a statue made of gold So that so, other worship and uh, the, this the wickedness that entered the King Nebuchadnezzar. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. So yes. this was a vanity project. <laughs> Any comments? Any uh, anyone like to add on to this? The floor is open. All right. All right. Uh, continuing verse five. We're going to read from verse five to seven. Um, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the cornet, the lyre, the harp, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship, at that moment, they will be thrown into the middle of a burning fiery furnace. Then at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, the pipe, cornet, the lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the peoples, the nations, and the languages fell down, worshiping the image of gold that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar, the same man who said, everyone worship the true Elohim, who told his, you, Daniel, who revealed the, the dream to you. Now he had already forgotten because he was told that he was going to be or he is the head of gold. It grew, his head grew bigger. And then he then gave a directive. And he even said, whoever does not fall down and worship 
at that monument on that uh, moment, they will be thrown into the middle of the burning fairy furnace. He looked at himself and he thought he was even above the creator himself. And uh, we can see this is the mind of a man when he is given a little bit by Yahweh, he thinks that he is untouchable. Not knowing that the breath that he is using, it is borrowed breath. Yahweh can take it at any minute. Hallelujah, Brother Karunda. Yes, we can now see that uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, actually the purpose of make the statue was that people should worship that statue. And he said that the golden image must be worshiped by people. And he said, once the, 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 the sound of the horn, pipe, covenant, lay, hem, and all kinds of music, then all people, the nation and la the language and languages shall fall down and worship the image of gold that the King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. We can see now, instead, you, you, you know, human beings are so forgetful. King Nebuchadnezzar forgot that there was Yahweh in heaven who declared the sacred thing about his matter, the dream through prophet Daniel and the, the companions. He can now forget and now he's making a statue that cannot even speak, neither talk, neither move. And now he wants people to worship that statue. He has already forgotten that the same statue, not only the statue, including the wise men of Babylon, could not give the interpretation of his dream. And now he's requesting people to worship an image which has no even breath. Actually, if you want to move it, you have to carry it. And now he wants people to worship. He has forgotten that Yahweh gave revelation of the future through Daniel and Azariah, Hananiah, and Mishael. And now he wants the whole nation, people, languages, tongue, to worship the golden image that he has made. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. So, so this was a ma massive vanity project. So that to look at unto me before everybody else. I am the king of kings. Pastor, we can continue the yes. fiery furnace. That's, all. That's quite interesting how vanity it takes over. We'll continue yes. uh, from verses 8 to 10. Shalom. Then at that time, men, Sheldon, came near and accused slandered. Uh, I beg your pardon, I'll read this again. Then at that time, men, Sheldon, came near and accused sl and slandered the Jews. They answered and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who shall hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, cornet, the lyre, harp, and the bagpipe, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall in worship, he should be thrown into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are men, Jews, whom you have set over the, who have set over the business of the province of Babylon, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
These men, O king, do not pay attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see now, these Chaldeans came near and they accused and slander the Jews. Xenophobia. They answered and said to the king, O king, they went and they report to the king and sell out the Jews to the king. And what was their intention? Their intention is they wanted these Jews to be killed. Specifically, they wanted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because they felt inferior. Remember, it was the Elohim of these Jews who managed to interpret the dream. And then now they wanted to, because they could not interpret the dreams themselves. So they wanted to find a way of fixing them because they, it made them look silly because they did not know how to interpret the dream. So we find even in the life that we, we live, there are people that are used by Satan with the intention of hurting us. But my brothers and sisters, we need to understand that it is written good or bad, it works good for those who believe. So we will see how good did this work out for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego since they believe. Hallelujah, Brother Karunda. We can see now, uh, since Daniel, Azariah, Mishael, and Hananiah never worshipped the image of the gold that the king Nebuchadnezzar set up, they rejected. Now, the Chaldeans are, are now accusing the, these four guys to the king. They are reporting that they never worshipped the image of the king. And uh, what is their intention? They want now the command of the king to act upon them. Remember, King Nebuchadnezzar said before that whoever shall not worship the image shall be thrown into fire. And now the Chaldeans here, they want the Jews to be killed for they do not worship the God of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And uh, this is normal to human beings that they are so quick to forget and again, they are so quick to make judgment over others. They have just forgotten that they are gods, they are sorcerers, magics, and all the wise men of Babylon could not give the interpretation of the king. And their fate was that they were to be cut into pieces. But now they are accusing the same Jews who saved them from the hand of the, the king. Remember, Ariok was about to kill all the magicians, the wise men of Babylon. Now they want, to, they want the Jews who saved them from the wrath of the king to be killed. These are human beings. They are so quick to forget and they are also quick to judge. Shalom, shalom. 
Shalom, Shalom brother. Shalom. Shalom. Um, any comments? Any um, uh, thing? Any views you'd like to add up, brethren? The floor is open. Yeah, it, it, it is so true when you consider the fact that um, these guys were supposed to be killed. But Daniel went and said, no, don't kill them. I'll go and, and speak and tell the, the king about his dreams. And um, we know that um, the, this statue, remember the uh, book of Revelation talk about the 666 and it was said it is a number of men. It is a number of the government of men. And if you look at the statue that Nebuchadnezzar uh, made, it was also six cubic six. And uh, all of that points out to gold. That is the desire of man. A man, when he is proud and pompous, he looks at it, weighing it with gold. And we know also, um, King Solomon was given the six core six, uh, gold by the Queen of Sheba. So this is a number of men. It is one thing that brings proud uh, pride in a man. And uh, he was so proud of himself being the king of all kings and he made that statue for that particular reason. Because it represents the government of man. Remember Yeshua said, give me the coin and what image is there? And they said, it is the image of man, of Caesar. And they said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Because those things bring pride and pompousness to man. When man has got money, things changes, you start looking down upon others. This man forgot that it was the same Hebrew boys who interpreted his dream, but he had anger because they would not agree with worshiping. The thing that could not interpret, interpret his dreams in the first place. Where was his gods? Where was his wise men? But now, this thing that does not move, that does not speak, he wanted now that it should be, to be worshipped. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Project Vanity, we see it every now and then. Uh, <laughs> all right, continuing from the uh, book of uh, Daniel, uh, chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in anger and wrath, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you are not serving my God, nor worshipping the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, cornet, and the lyre, harp, and bagpipe, and all kinds of music, fall down and worship the image which I have made. But if you do not worship, in that moment you shall be thrown into the middle of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that Elo who shall deliver you out of, your, out of my hand? Hallelujah. 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 Here, yeah, Nebuchadnezzar got angry. And then he commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego 
must be brought before the king. And he asked them if it was true that they were not going to serve his gods. And you can see he has already forgotten that the same gods could not help him. But now he wants to know if it is true that these are not worshiping the God that could not help the king. Hallelujah. Brother Karunda. Yes, we can see now it's so true that uh, this, where were this God when King Nebuchadnezzar needed the liberation of the dream? They were still there, but they never give interpretation of the dream. It's only Yahweh, the living Yahweh, who these four men, Daniel, Azariah, Mishael, and, Hanan and Hananiah, that they served is the same Yahweh who gave the interpretation and revelation of the dream. And now, here, the king have already forgotten that the same gods cannot help in any way. Now he wants these four men also to be included in his God to worship them. And uh, as I said earlier, Babylon is one of the historical sites that worshipped a lot of gods, a lot of idols. And now King Nebuchadnezzar want everyone in the nation to worship his gods. And he is now requesting Daniel, Azariah, Michelle, and Hananiah to worship the image. And if they will not, then they're going to be thrown into the fire. And uh, it's so shameful that now the king is trying to oppress the people who helped him to understand the dream. He has forgotten all the good thing that these guys did. He actually even rewarded them, but he has already forgotten. These are human beings. It's only Yahweh who will not forget the good thing that you have done as long as you keep doing them. Let's trust in Yahweh and not human beings who can change in seasons. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Uh, so this was the second um, alley of Egypt where the gods were ruling, uh, were, were rulers of the day. Yes. Moving along. Any comments, uh, brethren, on, uh, on what has just been said? All right, as we continue. Daniel 3, verses uh, 16 to 19. <clears throat> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to return a word to you on this matter. If it is so that our Elohim, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, then he will deliver out of your hand, O king. And if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which we have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury uh, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and directed to heat the furnace seven times more than it was, usual, uh, it was its usual heat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see the actions of these three Hebrew 
men. Instead of being afraid and trying to save themselves, they actually said, we are not going to worship. If it was you, what would you have done? Knowing that there is fire. But these Hebrew boys, they knew that their Elohim was with them. I have heard people who start using, because of fear, they start lying or using Yahweh in a very different way. You'll find that they will tell you that Yahweh has given us wisdom in order for us to do A, B, C, D. Yet it is just camouflaging the spirit of fear and changing it and calling it wisdom. Here, these guys knew, and they even said, if it is so that our Elohim, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fury furnace, then he will deliver out of your hand, O king. And if not, let it be known to you, king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Here he told the king, they told the king that in either way, either Yahweh is gonna save us or we will not worship uh, your king. So both ways, we are not gonna do what you want. How many of us will have that courage? And at this mad, and they've got Neza angry. How many times do we actually get so afraid and compromise the word of Yahweh? Because we are afraid. Now we don't listen. We are now trying to save our skin. My brothers and sisters, we need not be afraid. Yeshua said, do not be afraid of the one that destroys the flesh, but rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both the flesh and the soul. And this is what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. They were not afraid of Nebuchadnezzar who could just kill their flesh. But rather, Elohim who is able to destroy. Most of us, we think at times that the, the wealthy that we have is everything not knowing that it is nothing. Look at the people who have got so much money and when their health is threatened, that money then ceases to mean anything because money cannot buy you life. When the breath is gone, is gone, but rather Believe in Yahweh who can give you everything. Hallelujah. Brother Karunda. Yes, we can now see that uh, eh, this fantastic, good answers. Well said that since the king was so furious with the gaze and the answers that they gave to the king shocked him such that he felt he felt burning inside him because the guy said Yahweh that we are serving will deliver us from your wrath and if again the king will not deliver us from 
the fire that you have set before us, you will not worship your image, neither your God. This is a very, very wonderful word. Remember, they are answering the king of the whole world. Today, can you dare answer your president in this manner? Or you just fear and say, okay, let me just do since the head of the state has said it. My brothers and sisters, we should not compromise our faith. We should stand and defend our faith. Let's defend the word of Yahweh. Let's live according to the word of Yahweh. These guys knew very well that they, are, they were not supposed to worship idols. That's why they are saying even if the Yahweh that we serve will not deliver us from your fire, then let but we will not worship image. I think that we need that we should know that we are serving a true and living Yahweh who can deliver, who can help, who can be with us always. This is the, the faith and courage that we need as brothers. We are learning this. It's not that we need so much history to understand what happened before. This is to encourage us and to give us, to motivate us and know that we are serving a true Yahweh. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. shalom. We, we have, have a got a, a, a message from Ampri. She said, these men demonstrated faith. They were prepared for anything to happen to them, but they knew Yahweh will never let them down or bring them to shame. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. it's so true because Yahweh said, he promised each and every one of us on this platform that he will never leave us, neither will he forsake us. And Yahweh said, never again shall my people be shamed. So if Yahweh said those words, why are we afraid? David says, where can I go? If I go even in Sheol, you are there. That means Yahweh is with the believers everywhere. So why worry? Why are we afraid of the things that are happening today in our lives? Why are we so scared about challenges that comes to us? Why are we worried and scared about what are we going to do tomorrow? Because Satan has devised a new plan through our own relatives or through our own spouses or through our own children to derail us. We should know that whatever the enemy is doing, Yahweh has already put a parameter around us that we cannot be tested more than we can bear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Pastor, don't you think on one of these things, why Nebuchadnezzar uh, is uh, all, uh, all angry? You know this thing that I, I made you. I made you who you are. So you're supposed to actually give me your soul and everything so that you can be uh, in my good lap at any given time. You know that mindset of people that I made you. Yes. Um, in, in this case, also, uh, Nebuchadnezzar felt embarrassed that they would just still, being slaves, would just still 
go against his wish. Mm -hmm. Because they thought that since they are slaves, they will jump and do it. And uh, that is exactly what is happening in the mentality of people. That if we think someone is below us, beneath us, and uh, if we then say something and that person turn it down, we become so angry because we were looking down upon this person. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when we want to show that person that we still have power over them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any comments, brother? Any uh, contributions you'd like to give on to this before we can continue to the verse, uh, to verse 20? Shalom. Uh, we're going to read from verse 20 down to 23. And he ordered mighty men of valor in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were tied up in their coats, their gowns, and their hats, and their other and other clothes, and were thrown into the middle of the burning fiery furnace. Then because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame was of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the middle of the burning fiery furnace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, we okay. see now uh, the king ordered the mighty man in his army, not just anyone, but those mighty men of Allah to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the burning furnace. And these men were tied up. Look at the anger of the king. He, he even took their gowns, their heads, their clothes, right. and were thrown into the middle of the fire. It is like uh, I don't know, Unyanya. They, they despised them. Yeah. Because they had done this thing which was despicable to go against the order of the king. Meanwhile, they are just slaves. He wanted everything that has anything to do with them destroyed. But what happened when they threw them into the fire? Those men who were responsible are the ones that caught fire. And Shadrach <laughs> and Bishak and Abednego were thrown into the fire. But the throwers got bent. This is the power of Yahweh. Not what the churches tell us or tell you when they say back to the sender. No, that is not the back to the sender. This is back to the sender. Because they wanted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to burn. But it changed. The fire went for them instead. Hallelujah. Brother Karunda. Uh, yes, this is so fantastic that it's very, very, very much interesting that since now the king was furious with the guys, he commanded them that they should be tied and be thrown into the finance of fire. And funny enough, since the matter of the, or the command of the, the king was so urgent, so the mighty men who threw you Azariah, Mishael, and Hananiah into the burning finance. They were killed by fire. Remember the king had commanded that the, the heat of the fire should be made 
more hitters seven times. And now, the mighty men who threw them were killed instantly. We can now see the powers of Yahweh. Those who took charge or those who are responsible in drawing or fulfilling the command of the king that Azariah, Michelle, and Haranes should be thrown to the fire, they were killed themselves. What does this tell us? Yahweh will always be on your side. You should not fight for yourself. You should wait Yahweh to fight for yourself. You should not take revenge yourself. You should wait for Yahweh to do it because that's not your work. Your work is only to listen to the voice of Yahweh, to do the will of Yahweh, to do the word of Yahweh. That's our work as believers, not to fight for ourselves. No, neither to take revenge of ourselves. Let Yahweh do it for us. He will do it in the right way. But if you do it, I am sure you will not do it the right way. But Yahweh will do it in the right way. So, my brothers and sisters, we should not fear the wrath of the king or anyone who is mighty before us because the one living in us it's more greater than the situation than the events than the circumstances he has done it he will do it and he will continue doing things for us shalom shalom shalom, shalom. shalom. Um, we've got two messages here. Um, thank you very much, Brother Karunda. Um, Kemar Pri was saying that power might go out uh, it's between 8 or after 8. Um, so if she's off the platform, you should not be amazed. And then Brother Roma says, Fellows, I have noticed that any person who has authority who does not submit it to Yahweh as a sacrifice will inevitably fall short no matter their degree of eligibility to that authority they wield. Selah. Shalom, Brother Rama. Thank you very much. Pastor? Yes. Um, oh, we can, can we have see. a hand up? Sorry, Pastor, just to interject. Go ahead, Sister Nopkosi, you are recognized. Shalom, shalom, brethren. Um, this I, I was just waiting for this part. I think it is one <laughs> of the <laughs> most inspiring, uh, you know, one of the most inspiring um, uh, stories uh, that we have in, in, in the word of Yahweh. It really is. Um, it is so powerful that, you know, the, the, the knowledge that Yahweh, if you are so faithful and if you understand him so much, that you know he will go at great lengths of making sure that you know he put those parameters around you you know it actually it's it's one of the stories that bring goosebumps when when just thinking about how far Yahweh is always willing uh, to go for his people and that ours is just to trust him with our situations with you know with everything and uh, he will really go an extra mile uh, for us. He will go over and above, you know, what we would expect. And, uh, you know, I hope uh, everyone is, is inspired. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, yes, go ahead. Brother, and it is so true. Um, but let's go to the next chapter. And then we see more why it is important for us to believe in Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> 24 to 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was amazed, and he rose up in the haste. Uh, he spoke and said to his royal officials, Did we not throw three men bound in the midst of the fire? 
They replied and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Behold, I see four mean loose walking in the middle of the fire, and there's no harm among them. And, and the form of the fourth is like son of Elohim. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning fairy furnace. He answered and said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High Eloha, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the midst of, of the fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, my, my brothers and sisters, this is very important. This is very, very important for us as believers. There is no fire that Yahweh will not go in with us. Look at this. Nebuchadnezzar threw three men into the fire, but there was the fourth man there. Every situation that we find ourselves in, there is always the fourth man, like the one that was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We might be going through a tough time, but remember, you are not alone. There is that unseen, but you will be there holding your hand during difficult times. But why are we not seeing him? It's because we then put our, we are grossed onto the problem that the one Yahweh has put to serve us, we totally ignore. And we'll be only looking at the challenge and we'll make that challenge bigger than Yahweh himself then that challenge overshadows Yahweh. And that's when we'll then throw a pity party. Why me? But who was supposed to go through that? You are supposed yeah. to go through it because yeah. Yahweh has got confidence in you that you walk out on the other side and scratched with all your hair not even smelling smoke in the fire that you have walked through. But we don't want that. We don't want the fire to come near us. But the fire is necessary. If you are gold, you need to continuously be burnt so that all the impurities are removed and then you are perfect like a 24 karat gold. Brother Karunda. Brother Karunda, are you still there? Maybe it's the mute button. Uh, while we're still waiting for Brother Karunda. Um, okay, go ahead, Brother Karunda. Yes, we can now see this is so powerful that the king was amazed for he, he, for he, he even confirmed how many people were thrown into the fire. And the, the mighty man who threw them all the, the people who call, who witnessed the guys being thrown into the fire, they confirmed that they were three. But now the king can see four men walking in the midst of the fire. He was so shocked. He even decided to Actually, King, actually, the, 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 the three guys came out of the fire. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. shalom. shalom, shalom. All right. Yes, um, my brothers, there is nothing impossible for Yahweh. Yahweh is our Elohim of impossibilities. 
And here we can see that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fire. But since Yahweh is Yahweh of impossibilities, they did not get not even the smell of smoke on them. But when you look out at the fire, the fire demonstrated its power, its consuming power over those that threw them in, but it lost power over Shatrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And right now, my brothers, the fire Satan has placed on for you, if you believe in Yahweh, that fire will tend to be an air condition. And it will not have any effect on you. But when everyone else is burning, you will be actually walking, feeling nothing. And my brothers, why did Yahweh give us this thing, this example of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walking under the, in the fire? Yes, because Yahweh is going to demonstrate the same thing. When he's destroying the world, he said it has been reserved with fire. So that means the fire is going to be used to burn the world. And where will be the believers? They will be walking like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that fire, and the fire will not have power over them. This is the honest truth. It has happened before. It will still happen. Let's put our faith in Yahweh in everything, not to be worried about what is outside. Let's believe in Yahweh because Yahweh knows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, 20, uh, going ahead, um, <clears throat> for, we're going to read from 20 verses 27 to 28. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the king's royal officials assembled, and they saw the fire had no power over the bodies of these men, and the hair of their head was not scorched, nor were their coats changed, changed, nor had the smell of fire clung on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the Eloha of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his messenger and has delivered his servants who trusted in him and have changed the king's words and given, and given their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any Elo except their own Elohim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, there's times our resilience, our standing firm to the promise of Yahweh can actually make others realize the power of Yahweh. Mm. For here, they stood fast as they believed that even their coats were not touched, their hair was not touched. And this led to Yahweh being blessed by Nebuchadnezzar, who had put this two, the, 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 the statue of gold. But now he said, blessed be the Eloha of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his messenger and has delivered his servants who trusted in him, who trusted in him. This made the king realize the trust in the Eloha these Hebrew guys were believing in. Now the question is to you, do people see the Elohim that you, you worship, you believe in through the trust that you have for him? People can only know that we are believers of Yahweh, our Elohim, when they see the trust that we be give to Yahweh. 
and that can actually change other people's lives. Brother Karinda. I think, uh, Pastor, while we're waiting for him, there's a delay in, in him. <laughs> for the, oh, Yeah, there's a delay on his side. And that's why he kind of takes slightly longer to respond. Or is it a delay or is a... Is I think it's a delay. Or... Mute button. I think it's a delay. Let me just see. Uh, do we still have him here? I don't see him in the uh, in the chat oh, box. Okay, again. no, that's fine. Let's let's carry on. Fine, let's continue. Uh, but Pastor, adding on here, it is um, beyond uh, beyond the faith that uh, you you think sometimes you may have, but it's the trust that you you. I'm in a tongue tie. Let's continue. I'm in a tongue tie. I'll bat my tongue. <laughs> let's go back. Uh, I think I'll just contract. Yes, sir. Um, yes, we. You only believe a word of someone you trust. Right. Because the carrier of the word, I have to be someone who has qualities of telling the truth. Right. Like Yahweh gave, made an oath and he used his name. So because of that, we know that it is impossible for Yahweh to lie. Hebrews tells us that. Mm -hmm. But if we don't see Yahweh as someone who tells the truth, there is no way we can believe his word, meaning there's no way we can act upon his word. Uh, there was a time I took a small boy and I put him on a table and I said, jump, I'll hold you. And the, jump, the, the child just jumped without even thinking twice. And I hold this boy. And then I took her sister who was younger and I put the, 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 the same guy on the table and say, jump your sister, I'll hold you. And the boy says, no, I am not gonna jump. She is not gonna hold me. Why? This is exactly what we are doing. We look at Yahweh, we look at ourselves, we look at who we are, and then we say, Yahweh, on this matter, you are too small. I will handle it myself. Because we don't trust Yahweh to be able to do the things that he said you will do. But these Hebrew boys, they trusted Yahweh. The king saw the trust of the word of Yahweh in these boys. And that's why we as believers, regardless of what comes our way, we need to remember his word and believe it. As he said, you'll never leave us, neither will he forsake us. My brothers, what does never mean? in Swahili, what does never mean in Zulu? What yeah, does okay. never mean in Tosa, in Swana, in Pedi, in Debele, or even in Latin, never means never. So why is it difficult for us to believe Yahweh when he said never will he leave us, never will he forsake us? Let's not make our problems bigger than Yahweh. Um, then we come and say, uh uh, this one is too big, you will not be able to catch me. Just like the little boy I told to jump, and their sister was going to catch him. 
he looked at the sister and looked at her way, at his weight and he said, no, this is not going to happen. But to me, he looked at me and he said, yes, he can do it. Let's all look at our father and they see him being able because he has told us that his word will never go back to you, to him empty handed without achieving what he was supposed to. And we have got so much examples of our father doing what he, he said he would do. We see he saved these, these Hebrew boys from the fairy furnace and you will also save us from whatever type of fairness that we might meet in life. Brothers and sisters, let's move our eyes away from the challenges, from the problems, and let's place them to Yahweh. For we know Yahweh said, seek ye the kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Ye of little faith. Words of Yahshua telling Peter. Uh, you can continue to the next page, Pastor. Uh, any comments, brethren? Any um, uh, contributions to what we have uh, come through so far? All right, we continue. Verses 29 and 30. And a decree is set out by me that every people, nation, and language who speak anything amiss about the Elo of, uh, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he will be made into mere members, and his house shall be made an outhouse, because there's no other Elo who is able to deliver like this. Then the king made Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego prosper in the province of Babylon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, if Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego had bowed down to the statue, Nebuchadnezzar would not have been given the chance to glorify Yahweh. You know, that person that is bringing the hell into your life, if you don't give in, and they do the evil that he wants you to do, you will find out that at the end of the day, if you stick to the righteousness, you'll find that person will glorify Yahweh and his life might be saved because of your standing steadfast in the word of Yahweh. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see here, the king made Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego prosper in the province of Babylon. At times, our tormentors are the ones after seeing the way we believe in our Elohim, they will actually end up blessing us. Because of our faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Karunda? Brother Karunda? Yes, I'm sorry about that. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, we can see now uh, the governors and the, all officials of the, of, the, of the Babylon assembled together to see the drama, what happened. And they find that uh, the Azariah, Mishael, and Hananiah, while they came out of the fire, they never even smelled the, 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 the clog on them. And, and again, their hair was all there. No one, no even single hair was burned. And, and now, King Nebuchadnezzar recognized and blessed Yahweh of Azariah, Mishael, and Hananiah and actually recognize that he is the true Yahweh. We can all see that uh, this is what Yahweh is looking from us. 
we should stand firm with our faith so that we can bring glory to Yahweh. We can see now the king and his officials, the whole government is now respecting Yahweh who is being served by Azariah Mishael and, and Hananiah. So brothers and sisters, let's stand, let's wake up and do what we are supposed to do as far as the faith is concerned. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. 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 Um, uh, what I like here is that, uh, uh, is reiterating what Brother Kurinda is saying, that um, so all the officials were called. And I can just imagine the scolding that they were getting, like, yeah, hey, you guys just simply don't even bother to change anything because you are just useless. Here are people who are useful. <laughs> and, you know, just being put aside, uh, you know, like here we are, we say we are being set apart from the world. And here we are is the king setting apart the people who are worshippers of Elohim, the children of Elohim. And uh, you can just imagine how they were squirming around by saying that, you know, I know these guys are up to something else. And maybe each other is kind of one of those wizards or sorcerers at the background were kind of searching for which magic were they using or formula that they were using so they can use it uh, uh, in future. But you cannot try and compare Yahweh's intervention with any sorcery or magic or anything that you think that you can do. But Yahweh's is beyond this world that it, it, it even baffles the, 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 what you call the, the intellect or the so-called know, who's who's who know. Pastor, in Revelations, we saw there was that um, lake of fire, right? That all the, 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 the worshippers and, and uh, the people of, of, of Satan will be thrown into that. Now, I kind of looked at this furnace as that lake of fire when they, were, they bound Meshach uh, uh, to, to, to be thrown in there. They got burnt. So to me, it was, a, it's a, you know, when I look at that picture, it, is, it tells me that no, don't worry. They're trying to burn you right now. But who is burning? They are. Come their time to burn. They will definitely burn because you are spared as you are one of mine. Hallelujah. Brethren, this is massive. This is massive. Before we close, what's your contribution to this? If you say there's nothing that you have picked up from here, and then that means you lost the day. Sister Nopkosi, I'll just have to now go around Robin. Brother Max? Okay, go ahead, Sister Nopkosi. Uh, shalom, shalom. Um, yes, it is uh, one, uh, like I said, one of the most, uh, I like, I like this story um, a lot. It, it, it reminds us of a faithful Elohim that we serve. It reminds us that uh, he, is, um, he is most powerful, that his hand is always with us, that he sees us whenever we are, you know, we have fires, whenever we have so much that we go through, he sees us, you know, and he knows our faithfulness. Um, so, so yes, I'm, I'm very inspired uh, again by this story, um, and uh, I hope everyone is, and I, I hope that, you know, we know uh, if we had ever any doubt that there is nothing that is impossible for Yahweh, now we know um, that uh, Yahweh can, can be there for us in our most desperate hour. He is that faithful Elohim that you know, no matter what we are going through, we will indeed be seen with a fourth man. And you know, it will be as if, you know, our uh, uh, people don't even recognize what is happening, but Yahweh will be visible with us. Those uh, uh, who persecute us, they will know our Elohim that he never leaves us. Instead, he goes uh, in the fire with us. Shalom. Shalom, hallelujah. Shalom. 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 Brother Max? Sister Kayo, Sister Jay, 
Sister Ems, you're still there. And Sister um, Gladys, shalom, shalom. What's your take before we close? You cannot leave this space and say that you're not touched. This is something when you say you're walking through fire. And through the fire, I am not going to be burnt. I'm not going to be unscathed. Are they shy today? Oh, people are shy. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, Sister Kanyo. Yes, we are here. <laughs> Don't it, be shy it, for it, Yahweh. Uh, <laughs> it is indeed a beautiful, beautiful scripture. I am currently walking through the fire. It is, I, I feel it. I feel it. But having sisters who have such strong faith in Yahweh, like my sister Nobukosi, she, she, she is, I wouldn't say the fourth man because the fourth man is Yahweh himself. I would say she's the <laughs> second man walking through the fire with me. Right I on. am, I am. I trust in him. I believe in him. I am the fire will soon burn out. It is out already. It is out. Hallelujah. 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 All right. All right. Uh, Sister Cladis says we thank Yahweh. Uh, Sister Cladis, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. No, 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 no. Come on, spit, spit it out. Spit it out. Yahweh would like to hear you. Uh, Sister Ems. Sister Brown. Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. Shalom, my sister. Hallelujah. Uh, we thank Yahweh. Um, this is one of my favorite books. Yes, we need to trust. What about Corinthians? Uh, no, I'm saying this only the... <laughs> the, the, the... <laughs> hey, pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Brother Tolani, we should uh, truly, truly, truly trust in Yahweh. We know we are, okay, we are human beings. And sometimes when you face those trials and, and, and those challenges, we, we tend to have the spirit of fear. And once we have spirit of fear, our trust in Yahweh will automatically uh, disappear. But this scripture, it, it tells us that nothing can stand before Yahweh if we truly trust in him and then stop fearing things and stop uh, doubting him. So we really need to trust in him, fully, fully trust in him. The problem with us, we focus too much on problems rather than knowing that our Elohim is bigger than those problems. If we can remove our eyes from the challenges, from the problems, then knowing which our eyes should be fixed on Yahweh, regardless of what we're going through then we will prosper. We will see him walking with us through those storms, through those fires and everything. Hallelujah. 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 So you, you say, shy away from, shy away from Bazotin. What will they say? Hallelujah. Yes, it's the end. Who, who are those? Remember, we are not part of them. Of this so world. we don't, we're not even, no, we don't even, I mean, supposed to look at who are, who are what Bazotin because we are not supposed to be part of them. It doesn't Amen. matter who, out of 100 people, if you stand by the word of Yahweh and you, you become one and you're scared of being different from people, then you are not of Yahweh. We should always be different as long as we know that we are standing right with Yahweh. We should not compromise Yahweh's word because of the crowd of people or the Oguti Abant Bazotin. We're not supposed to be in that position of Oguti Bazotin. What will they say? That's our worry. What will the tongues say? Sister Brown. Uh, Sister Nobukosi. Shalom, shalom. Can you hear me? Yes, yes Mama, we can. we can. I was just saying, uh, Sister Emily, Pastor got you there. You should always say one off. <laughs> <laughs> it's one off. Never say this is my favorite one because Pastor, 
<laughs> Pastor has a memory of an elephant. <laughs> no, uh, Corinthians was always on their lips. Today we're going to be, what's, what's, what's the favorite Corinthians? Corinthians was it seven or six. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Uh, Pastor and Brother Karinda, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for guiding us, uh, opening up our hearts, our minds, our souls. Uh, into re, in fact, reigniting the faith in us. Because sometimes we, we, we say, yes, yes, we're faithful, we're faithful. And when this little scorpion just comes your way, and then you simply just uh, jump. Yes, Sister Ems, you are noted. Go ahead, Mama. Uh, what I want to say is, um, Pastor, thank you and, and Brother Karunda. For, for, for opening my eyes, uh, compared to what we, we, we went through yesterday with the book of Daniel chapter two, now we are in chapter three, I've learned that um, it was the spirit of pride that made the right. uh, King Nebuchadnezzar to, to forget uh, those faithful uh, servants, uh, Shadrach, Abednego, and, and, and the other one, uh, that made him forget how faithful they were now he forgot, but these are the same people who said only Yahweh can reveal this kind of secret to you. But now, um, because now they didn't want to bow down to this um, uh, golden statue, now King Nebuchadnezzar, because of pride, I, I just want to thank you and Yahweh to reveal that to me, that because of pride, now sometimes we forget who we are because of pride. We sometimes forget uh, how Yahweh has been faithful to us the little that he can give me now, it can make me forget uh, that I'm just a servant to Yahweh and forget where I'm coming from with Yahweh. Thank you so much, guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Sister Ems. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, and you know, Sister Emily, we, we always say that the spirit of pride, it is not of Yahweh. And Yahweh himself has said in his word that we must humble him ourselves before him because Yahweh knows that we cannot serve him while we have a spirit of pride. And it is only when we lose our pride that Yahweh will always uh, be there for us because then he is able to intervene. When we still consider ourselves to be high as well, Yahweh cannot um, intervene because he does require us. It is a requirement. That's what he says in, in the word that uh, if we humble ourselves, he will hear Hallelujah. us from heaven and he will heal our land. That means if we are still not humble, Yahweh will never hear us because he says only when we humble ourselves, that he, then he will hear us from heaven. Uh, so yes, you know, we have seen, you know, um, I think, you know, perhaps all of us in our workplaces everywhere, we have seen people who are not able to humble themselves and as such, you know, uh, things that could have been avoided, you know, they are, mm -hmm. they are not able to avoid because of the spirit of pride. Because if you look at this, you know, um, you know, there was no need for anyone to ever be in a position where they were faced with death uh, because these people had assisted this king to begin with. So there was no need, but because of the spirit of pride, uh, you know, uh, there were two casualties uh, that were, 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 that is why also the word says that, you know, we cannot be in the middle because if those people had taken the stand uh, of Yahweh as well, they would have refused to put these men in the fire. But because yes. they were nervous, they were fearful of this king, uh, not knowing that the king, the king was not going to die, but it was them that were eventually going to die. So it is very important that as believers, there is no gray areas. We are always sure of what is it that we are doing. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Sister. Of course, hallelujah. Sister Brown, uh, uh, is there anything before I, we close you'd like to say? Right, we're still waiting for Sister Brown. Um, once again, I express my deepest and sincere gratitude to both you, Pastor and Brother Karunda, uh, with uh, the great lessons that you give us each day. Uh, may Yahweh richly bless you in greater wisdom and greater light 
and greater love and that all we do that we as we play, place our ears unto your voices that they touch our soul and spirit may everything be enlightened and um, in yeshua's name we pray so be it um okay uh, all right so tomorrow it is praise and worship so it is uh, seven o'clock uh, who's running the show is it you sister ems is it you sister no of course or is it is Gladys still there all right, the ladies will be running. Uh, our ladies, will, our sisters will be running uh, the praise and worship for tomorrow. Uh, seven o'clock, we meet. And that's where we'll hear the, what the psalmist says. And let's uh, praise and worship, be grateful, give testimonies and give thanks and gratitude uh, to, the, uh, to, to the almighty Yahweh. Uh, Sister Brown says, Shalom. Um, uh, Sister Ems, can you kindly please close in us for us in prayer? But before that, uh, Pastor, anything you'd like to close uh, this uh, no, week for? There is nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Go right. Okay. All right. Shalom. Thank you very much, Pastor. Sister Ems, over to you, Mama, to close for us in prayer, Mama. Hallelujah. Uh, let us Hallelujah. pray. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we thank you. We glorify and honor you. Uh, we say thank you again, Father, for revealing this, for teaching us through your word. Father, we pray, Father, that you give us the spirit to be humble. You give us, Father, your spirit, Father, to be teachable. Father Yahweh, help us not to be puffed up, Father, for we are only the servant, Father. We are saving, Father. Help us to remember, Father, that we are all, Father, equal in front of your eyes. Help us, Father, to love one another unconditionally and help us, Father, to be uh, the brothers keepers to each and every one. We thank you and we glorify you in the wonderful name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Father Yahweh, we thank you for the spirit of understanding of your word. We thank you, Father, for the wisdom that you have put upon your children. Father Yahweh, you are Yahweh Elohim. Nothing can stand before you. You are Yahweh who look after those who are calling upon his name. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. We honor you. And we give you all the praises in the wonderful name of Yeshua, our Messiah, as you are about to depart. We pray, Father, that your spirit continue, Abba Yahweh, to be with us, continue to, 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 to give us direction, continue us, Father, to guide us. We thank you, Father. In the wonderful name of Yeshua, Messiah, we pray. So be it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So be it. Hallelujah. Shalom, peace. For those who start that day, good day. For those who starting their evening, good night. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.